their contracts. Did you have to pay a lot of taxes to their countries to work there? Yes. Any? Okay. All right. Um, what kind of, I guess, how did it work? I mean, when you went to make construction documents and stuff, did the associate firms just take all that over? Or? The associate firms take that over and do that. Um, the only problem we ever had was um, is the conversion to metric. Okay. You know, um, the first two projects I did were almost pre-AutoCAD. I mean, AutoCAD existed, but it was version what two or three. Mm -hmm. um, no one else had it, and. Um, what you do is you really set up a really good system to, um, is it the end of DD that you pass off, is it the beginning of DD, is it um, you know, design development, or is it schematic design, and what level do you push off? Obviously they want to push you as far down the chain to hand off basically the concept is what they love to do. They say, you're going to come up with the concept, and you're going to pass it off to our people over here to do it, and they're going to develop it. Um, but what you want to negotiate is the ability to basically hand off as far down as possible for your fee. And because it just has, you know, our architecture is, I think it's hilarious that we have to teach collaboration because what else could it possibly be? How many people are involved in building the building? Right. It's thousands, it's hundreds of thousands. Um, so, you know, to have to consider that, what you want to do is you want to try and pass off like an 80%, 100% of possible design development set and have all the details that are critical laid out. The only problem you need to do is you really want to pull that firm in because materials are very different, even the measurements are very different, um, some practices are different. Um, we talked about this on your detail yesterday. Insulation is done differently. They have very different insulation products, um, and they have different, for example, R factors, R19, they're like, why would you ever do R19? Well, what's that? Um, using that insulation, they, they don't use a lot of that. I mean, it's a lot of it's rigid. Uh, and how they do that whole thing. So there's a conversion factor during that end is where you want to take your details and your construction documents that are at that phase, and you want to be able to mesh and convert those over to theirs. You know, otherwise, they're just going to change, at, and they'll be forced to, and you'll have set it up so that they have to. They will actually be able to open the door to completely change this, 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 and this. If I do this, I like the elevator. If I do this, I like the elevation, and you're just, what happened to the project? Okay. So. Do you like their practices more than, like, the materials, things like that, um, necessarily how the wall assembly goes together? I mean, do you see... I guess their side and why they build the way they do? Some yes and some no. Um, where I like their systems more and actually something that we're trying to develop is they see, and these are the philosophical changes, they see in so like Germany, France, uh, Switzerland, you know, any real developed country, and then Japan. It's fabulous that in China starting to get that way as well too because they're starting to borrow some. We see it as construction which means you're custom making everything. Picture if you had to do a car that way, or your cell phone, or your computer. Okay, architecture, construction, we're the only ones who are still being so anachronistic about that and so just stone age. Right? They see this production. So there's a lot of pre-made assemblies, and they've been doing it for a long time in building technologies. And um, there are codes are set up for that. If you read our code, we talked about this in our comp class, our code, the, the new UBC has just tried to level it, saying that we will make it remarkably expensive for construction if you do not sprinkle your entire building for fire code. So area separation walls, the requirements are so intense and so often that they'll make it. And it's because they want to be able to knock out the idea of this detail right here looks different depending on what architect detailed it and what construction company built it and how tight the you know construction reviews were. Over there what they've done is you buy a series of components and you build it just like your computer, just like your car. Open up your Dell, open up your Mac, you're going to find parts by IBM and Motorola. 
Apple doesn't make a computer, Dell doesn't make a computer, IBM doesn't really even make a computer. They assemble pieces themselves. Your car, you have a Honda, it's basically made here. There's just enough parts, and it's usually the radio will knock it over to be domestic because of trade policies. So it's, just, it's, it's parts and pieces of simple. Porsches are made in the same factory as a Volvo. They ship them up there and have them made. That's where the bodies are made, right? So that's how it's all made. This camera is made that way. And over here in America, we're still desperately trying not to do that for some, you know, ass backwards reason. <laughs> it seems like a more economical process. It's I mean, remarkably more economical. You have economic. to streamline your drawings and everything so you don't have to redo. Well, that's the other thing that I found. I haven't had a chance to really do a set of working drawings uh, or even really get into it because the last international project I did was, what, 2001? Yeah, it was right, maybe 2000. Yeah, because I was over there during our election in 2000. That was amazing. Um, <laughs> <coughs> okay, back still. Did there. they care? I mean, were they oh, it was just so funny over there. They were, they were, um, you Americans. I mean, <laughs> you think this is so spectacular? <laughs> this <laughs> happens over here all the time. <laughs> you know, like, you know, get over it. Um, um, but you know, even the working drawings, and then we've talked a little bit about this more. Is there's not really working drawings. You know, the architects set of drawings are very minimal, you know, and you've already selected the components, assembled them in certain ways. Like if you look at, uh, if you ever get a, uh, the ability to look at a set of drawings from Jean Nouvelle, I mean, they're all shop drawings. And they're all shop drawings and they're all highly exact and they were executed long before the final permit drawings are out. I mean, the permit drawings are, are tiny. You know, and then what they'll do is in sequence they will issue various permits. You know, we get a global permit and then they have the field inspections and they sign off for each phase and each pace, you know, the framing, the, the sheathing, the whatever. They basically issue, in some countries, they issue permits as you go. Which if you think about the process of that, you know, we try and assure a certain set of assurances so that you can continue. Every time a part of the construction or the pr production process begins, you have the opportunity to have your project shut down. So, and that is the way that their government, their large governments, exercise control over finance and construction and what goes on. And that is why, for example, they needed that years ago because they were green or sustainable long before it. Germany's green economy. Tiny Germany has a GMP almost equal to ours, and they are the most, by law, mandated green and sustainable um, economy. And you know, we all marvel at Tom Main's uh, San Francisco office building with the skip-stop elevators and tiny floor plates. Well, Alvaralto did that because sunlight only comes in 25 feet. Hallways are 10 feet wide, so it's a 60 foot by 